Okay, so whereas in the last tutorial uh, we looked at creating family tables uh, to store uh, different instances of the same part uh, within one part file, in this tutorial we're going to expand on that a bit by uh, patternizing uh, family tables. And what that means is uh, we're going to create multiple uh, instances of the part in the family table uh, but we're going to let the system uh, uh, create those instances by uh, picking certain dimensions and parameters and allowing it to uh, vary them by a set increment each time. So this is the tutorial that we'll be following uh, and you need, to, you need to load in this file the patternize.prt file uh, and that should be in the patternize uh, folder. So I'm just going to bring that in uh, and here's the file. It's very similar to the uh, socket model uh, that we were using in the last tutorial uh, and what we're going to do straight away is we're going to make sure that the uh, all the datum types are disabled and we're going to have a look uh, in the uh, parameters uh, window here and what you can see here is uh, already we've got a parameter saved in this part uh, which relates to the socket size so you can see currently uh, this socket is a, an 11 mil uh, socket. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're just going to make the uh, some of the dimensions visible on this part so you can see we've got a depth dimension uh, and a diameter here uh, and rather than see the values we want to select switch dimensions uh, so that we can see the given names for both of these uh, parameters so we've got a depth and a diameter. Uh, we're also going to have a little look at any relations that are already in this part so uh, model intent again and relations and hopefully what you can see from here is that diameter value uh, isn't directly editable it's actually been generated from uh, the parameter uh, socket size times by a static value there so times by 1.35 so the diameter is being calculated uh, using this relation so given that uh, what it's likely uh, uh, what it's reasonable to assume is that uh, we will uh, define the socket size uh, with a set value and then the system will automatically vary the model uh, by calculating this diameter. So that's okay. Uh, so we're just going to go into the family table dialog now. Uh, you can see that it's empty currently. Uh, we're going to add a column in there. Uh, the first thing that we're going to add is a parameter and it will be the socket size option that we're going to add into the uh, into the items uh, box there so let's click insert you can see that it's been entered and then we're just going to click close and then as well as the socket size we want to add the depth uh, uh, dimension in there as well so we'll just select dimension as our uh, type and then we can just select the depth there. You can see that we've picked up the depth and the socket size there. So we can OK that now, and get back to the family table. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new instance into the table here. So you can see that by default, the values just uh, follow the uh, parent part there. That's what these uh, asterisk signs mean. Uh, no variance uh, but what we're going to do we're going to select this copy the selected instance with increments uh, and then in brackets it's telling us that that's known as patternizing so we get this new dialog uh, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, change the quantity here up to six 
So we want uh, six variations of the uh, the parameter that we're about to select. Uh, and the first parameter that we're going to select is the socket size. So we've already set the six as the quantity. We're selecting the uh, socket size as the item that we uh, want to vary. And then we can add it to the list on the right here just by clicking this arrow. One last thing that we need to set is the increment that we're going to uh, vary each of these six copies by. And that first increment we're just going to set as one. So just type one and then hit enter. And you can see that that's shown up as a row in the table up here. So that's the socket size variance. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to vary the depth here. Uh, so the way that we're going to do that uh, is we're going to uh, click the add arrow here. Uh, we're going to select quantity as 2 for this item. Uh, we're going to select the depth on the left hand list here and add it across to the right hand list. And we're going to vary these increments by 30 this time. So enter 30 and then hit enter. You can see that that's shown up in the table also. So when we hit OK now you can see that a whole uh, collection of new instances have appeared here and if you look at how they've been varied on the right hand side here you can see that the socket size seems to be increasing by increments of one each time uh, and then it reverts back to its original value and the reason for that is uh, we also varied the depth measurement there so it's got uh, two different depths uh, that are uh, 30 mil apart. You can see that these varied depths here are exactly 30 mil more than the original depth, whereas these initial depths are the same. That's what the uh, asterisk means. It means that these ones stay the same as the initial. So you can see what's happened there with our table. Uh, we haven't had to generate all these new instances ourselves. We've just uh, set the number of copies and then set the increment for each one. So this is quite good for generating a large number of uh, instances of your part uh, with some automation uh, to uh, save, the, uh, save the time needed to uh, create all these. So if we just bring the uh, tutorial window back across now you can see that the uh, the table shown in the tutorial here, uh, what's been shown is the uh, instance names have all been uh, customized uh, to give a, uh, a descriptive name for each instance. So you can see that the socket size is included there and whether it is classed as a shallow socket, so there's all these original depths, these 25.4s would be classed as shallow and then uh, we have a deep variant at the bottom here for all the depths. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly rename all my instances. Uh, so that's quite time consuming. So I'll just show you the first one uh, as I do that. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to uh, select this initial pattern and just delete that uh, because that's no longer needed. So if I right click on the uh, cell there and then I should be able to uh, delete row there. So that's that initial one uh, that's gone. So if I just get my PDF back up now, so I'm going to start with the 11 mil here, the shallow variant, uh, and if I just click in there, I can type 11 millimeters underscore shallow, and then I can just hit enter uh, and then do that for all the rest of this uh, list. So as you can see, I've so I'm just about to rename this last instance here. You can see that I've done all the rest there. So this will be the uh, 16 millimeter deep variant. Uh, and because I hit enter there, it's actually given me another row. So I'm just going to delete that. I don't need that row. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to use the verify instances tool up here. 
uh, and what this allows us to do if we just hit verify uh, it takes each one of these uh, instances and it rebuilds them in the background uh, to check that they can actually be uh, resolved so if we were to put a, uh, a size in here uh, or a uh, dimension that didn't work uh, so that part of the sketch uh, broke through another part of the sketch let's say uh, it would uh, alert us to that and we would get a uh, unsuccessful in this column but we can see here that all these uh, instances all these variations all rebuild fine so uh, we're happy with that so we can close that uh, what we're going to do next is just use the preview tool uh, just to have a look at some of these so we're going to select the 15mm shallow select the preview tool here uh, we get a little 3D window here that we can rotate around and we can just check that what we expected to see there uh, is what we're actually uh, getting so let's just do the same with the 15mm deep just for comparison and you can see that that looks about right that's a lot deeper than the uh, one that we were just looking at so that's the end of the procedure so uh, the patternize option as I've already said it allows you to generate multiple uh, instances of your part without uh, specifying each one individually uh, you specify some dimensions or uh, parameters within the part and then you specify how you would like to vary them uh, and then uh, give the system the number of instances that you want to generate and it will uh, generate this table, uh, this family table for you and obviously that's useful when you're bringing parts like this say into an assembly uh, you can use these descriptive names that we've put in to select the part that you require uh, so let's just see quickly if we can uh, open this part again so this part is in session so we can uh, open it here and as you see when we come to open a new copy of this part we get all our descriptive names here as options so let's say we want a 16 mil shallow we can double click on that and we get the specific 16 mil shallow variant of this and you can see the name up here so that's the end of the uh, tutorial